Ah, hi everybody. How you all doing? Shalom. Um, at the beginning of my video, come out of her, my people. Um, I said that I had been planning to uh, do a video that would tie everything together. All the recent uh, videos that I've been doing on the Torah, etc. I'll be tying it all together. Um, this would be the one. With everything that's going on in the world at the moment, certainly believers, Bible believers, are recognising that Everything's pointing to Yeshua, Jesus, coming back very soon. <laughs> um, it's interesting that all the um, globalist agendas, shall we say, seem to be gearing themselves to coming to fruition around the, uh, the year 2030. And uh, I think that's interesting um, because theologically, well, maybe another video. Um, but as far as believers are concerned, the return of Yeshua means the marriage feast. And If, and I say if, not that's not because there's a doubt, but because from the parables, um, like the parable of uh, the 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 ten virgins, the wise the five wise virgins, and the five foolish virgins, it would indicate that not all believers are the bride but again perhaps another video what I want to address is a confusion maybe or a misrepresentation of the covenant. Now you see, most Christians, most believers, think that there are two covenants, essentially. The old covenant, which was all to do with the law of Moses, and the new covenant, which is all to do with Jesus. And most Christians tend to, or seem to have adopted the idea that uh, the, new, the New Testament writings are for the Christians. We're, we're, we're new Christians. We're new, we're new covenant, we're new, um, new testament believers, new covenant believers. And the old covenant, all the, the law and all the sacrifices, etc. That's the old testament. That's for the Jews. And yet again, that's an, <laughs> that brings up another can of worms, but hey. Um, I want to explain what the covenant is. The covenant was a marriage covenant. If you read
Uh, I'm just going to bring up a study I did a while back. If you read the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 8, you will see that um, Jehovah actually divorced the northern kingdom of Israel because of her continued adultery by way of idolatry. This presented him with a problem of his own law in that the Torah forbids the remarrying of a woman who has been put away, divorced, for adultery for, or for uncleanness, for going off with another bloke. You'll find that in Deuteronomy chapter 24 verses 1 to 4. It's very clear and it states that the only way to, the, to be set free from that law, that instruction, is through the death of one of the partners. This is why Yeshua had to die and be resurrected. His death on the cross was the sin offering, the sacrifice to pay the penalty for our adultery, But he had to be resurrected again because that was the only way for our Father to renew his marriage covenant with us. You remember Paul saying in Romans 6, 8, If we died with him, we shall also live with him. And when we come up out of the baptismal water, you know, when we're baptised, we are resurrected to new life with him. You'll notice how in Jer it says, he says in Jeremiah, I gave faithless Israel, the northern kingdom, her certificate of divorce because of her, um, her idolatries. It also says that, and her her sister Yehuda, Judah, seen what Israel, her sister Israel had done, did not repent but continued in her adulteries, in her fornication. You see, when Paul says we are no longer under the law, but under grace. He, mean, he meant that we are no longer subject to the law of sin and death. The law which separates us from the Father because of our sin, our adultery. That sin through which we broke the marriage covenant and the law which kept him from remarrying us. That aspect of Torah, that instruction in Torah, as described in Deuteronomy 24, which forbade him from remarrying us. And we see in Hosea how he keeps saying that he will bring us 
bring us back to him, his, the bride that he divorced, that he will bring her back to him. Well, that confused all the uh, all the scribes and the Pharisees and the sages back then. They couldn't work that out because they knew the Torah. They knew that he couldn't remarry his bride. That <laughs> is the mystery of the gospel that Paul talks about. That sin through which we broke the marriage covenant and the law which kept him from remarrying us. The very law which meant that we could do nothing to rectify the situation by ourselves, even if we had wanted to. By being rebels from birth and owned by the devil, we were destined to die in our sin and be lost forever, death having his eternal hold on us. Yeshua, being conceived of Holy Spirit and therefore not tainted by inherited sin, was not only the only one who could die and pay the atoning sacrifice for our sin, but was also the only one capable of rising from the grave and freeing us from the law which forbade our remarriage to Jehovah. This, I believe, is one of the main things that believers are unaware of, that the covenant was always a marriage covenant, was always a marriage covenant. And when Moses made the covenant with the the people of Israel, which of course included the foreigner travelling with them, the Gentiles. He sacrificed bulls and he splattered the blood over all of them. And that would, that would have taken uh, not just hours, possibly days, because there was a couple of million people. All right? The nation of Israel comprised well over a million people at that time. So that was a lot of bull's blood. It was a blood covenant. An agreement between the Father and us. That if either party broke the covenant, then that party accepted that they would be as dead as that bull. That was why the price for breaking the covenant had to be paid with blood. It was a blood covenant. When Yeshua spilled his blood on the cross, he renewed that covenant which we broke. And this is where I tie it all together. Deuteronomy chapter 29. Let's find it. Deuteronomy 
Deuteronomy chapter 29 Starting at verse 1 and Moses has just re is, is standing on top of Mount Nebo just before they go, the nation goes into the land of uh, the promised land. He's just reiterated the instructions of the Torah to the entire nation. And he says, These are the words of the covenant which Jehovah commanded Moshe, that's Moses, to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, besides the covenant which he made with them in Horeb, that's at Mount Sinai. So, the Torah, the law of Moses, if you like, or the law as given to Moses by the Almighty to remind the children of Israel what they had forgotten during the 400 years in Egypt. The instructions of the Torah are the conditions of the covenant. which even as Christians we are living in now because it's the same covenant which has just been renewed through the blood of Jesus, through the blood of Yeshua. So the law hasn't been done away with. exactly as Paul says in Romans 3, right at the end of Romans chapter 3, where he says, Romans 3, 31, do we then nullify the Torah through the belief, through the faith, let it not be. On the contrary, we establish the Torah. And that is a reference straight back to Deuteronomy 27 verse 26, where again Moses has just run through all the instructions of the Torah and he says, Cursed is anyone who does not establish the words of of this Torah. We are living in the renewed covenant. The renewed covenant is not a new covenant, it's not a different covenant. Because if you are wanting to be a citizen of the kingdom well just like every kingdom on earth it is governed by laws and the laws by which our father governs his kingdom is the Torah we cannot be free from sin through keeping the Torah That could only be accomplished by Yeshua shedding, shedding his blood as payment. It just opened the door for us to be released from the power of sin so that we could enter into the Father's kingdom <laughs> whereby we need to keep his laws otherwise the same with any country on, on earth. If you don't abide by the laws, if you don't abide by the instructions, they kick you out. And
and I'm going to share this. Revelation 22 and verse 14. Blessed are those doing his commands, so that the authority shall be theirs unto the tree of life, and to enter through the gates into the city, the new Jerusalem. In these days, at this time, with the return of Yeshua so imminent, we need to make sure we are walking in the kingdom, in righteousness. Psalm 119, verse 142. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is truth your Torah is truth I look forward to seeing you Shalom I would just like to add that I would really encourage you all to watch another little video um, which I will link in the description Shalom.